Okay, hello and welcome back to Zoink TV, I'm Andrew Weir, and today this is the final part of the Blender 2.65 Beginners Tutorial Series. So I thank you for watching the series, and I hope you learned quite a lot so far. Um, there are going to be a few more videos that I can add in there eventually, but if I don't get around to adding them in, all I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to mention pretty much uh, all the main places that you can go in Blender to do some more advanced stuff and look at your own tutorials, search it, and uh, research about it and you'll get some quite good knowledge in there just from other tutorials and things uh, because I can't cover it all myself as I don't know what most of it does but if you really are just a beginner that's followed my tutorial series you're not going to know that it exists and in which case I'm going to just give you a quick run through all the things which we could do uh, from, from this point so we've looked at the basics of materials and so on, textures and everything that you can do to create a scene but actually in the scene you can get some more advanced effects, you can do a lot more than animation and so on and so a good place to start with where to look at would be the particle effects and the uh, physics and I really don't want to go too advanced into these areas because you can uh, you can search on it about it yourself but if I just tell you what they can do then, uh, then you should get a good interest in there and search it yourself but particle effects um, it's fairly simple, just any effect that includes loads of uh, particles, for instance rain, snow, and uh, we can change it between the two types to hair as well, because hair is also something that's quite repetitive to make, so you've got hair, and we can actually change this into objects, meaning that if we had an island full of trees, we can create one tree, and we can make the particle cool effect look like we've got loads of trees in the scene, or just leaves on the trees. Um, and that gets much more advanced from that point, so if you're interested in that, then I'd advise you search more from there. But I'm going to get rid of that. And we've also got a few different physics effects here, uh, which include fluid, smoke, and cloth, which I'm pretty sure you probably will have seen, because, you know, you probably messed around with it at some point. Uh, you can get some really good advanced tutorials on that, but, you know, it's fairly basic stuff. You've just got to change the settings to get it to the... Uh, to get a bit more advanced. It's dynamic paint, that's also quite a new one, but it's it allows you to get things like uh, coloured in faces as well as um, some more advanced effects in there, which I forget what it's called, so if I just add a canvas we can get displace, um, which actually pushes the object down, and waves, which will make it look like a dripping effect, uh, and ripples in your shape. So quite advanced stuff, worth looking into. Um, but from that point we've also got animation which I haven't covered in the tutorial series yet but I'm thinking I might make a tutorial on it so if I already have then I'm not going to go too advanced here but basically just your basic animation would be motion uh, movements and animated motion and it can be done down here so if you search animation tutorials in Blender 2.65 or whatever it is on this point then you'll probably get some good tutorials there as well. Um, secondly, there are t three main areas in Blender which are quite important. There's the Blender Render, which is what's good for beginners. But if you want, if you want to get a bit more advanced and make a game, then there's the whole game engine in here, and it's going to change everything. Uh, for instance, these physics have changed into uh, all this stuff, so you can get some game physics in there uh, because it works a little bit differently. And I'm sure there are plenty more changes in here as well. Um, but I haven't actually used the game engine myself. I more go for the cycles render, which is just a little bit more advanced and uh, and uh, more realistic than the Blender render engine because apparently it uses a different uh, algorithm and things to work out the light, uh, which just makes the scene look a whole much more realistic. So if you've seen really detailed images on Blender uh, and you want to know how to make them yourself look into the Cycles Render Engine and uh, that's probably a good place to start um, and I won't go any more further than that, I might make my own tutorials on the Cycle Render Engine but not at the moment um, and then I think the last thing that I want to mention about uh, all this stuff which we could get into is all these down here so these are the main areas in Blender which you can uh, you can click on 
and it will work out a new scene for you. So for instance, compositing, that's used in the Cycles render engine quite a lot. It just means uh, doing some stuff in the background, doing some advanced node editing it's called, um, and it'll make the scene look a lot better because you can add loads more effects and so on. Um, but from that point, compositing goes to the default scene game logic, which is making your game uh, that we were looking at before. Uh, motion tracking, which is actually doing motion tracking in a video. So you can put your 3D scene in a video if you really wanted to. Um, and that's quite an interesting area to get into, as well as object tracking, which uh, I don't see how it's too different from motion tracking. But object tracking would be, uh, say, if you wanted to get an object into your hand uh, or over your hand, then you could do that and it would rotate with your hand uh, quite nicely. Uh, and that's constantly being developed, so that will get a lot better in the future. And you can even do a green screen in here as well. I've seen a video on that, uh, but I've never actually done it. Uh, scripting, now that, that really is for the more advanced users. I haven't even attempted to look in here. Um, I'm sure it's fairly... Um, you can do some fairly basic scripting as well as some super advanced scripting. I'm not too sure what you would want to script, so you could script um, Pretty much anything, I'm, but I'm just going to avoid that because I've never seen it. UV image editing we've covered, um, and video editing, which is basically similar to motion tracking, apart from here we'll add music and sound, and we can put the thing in front of the scene, uh, videos with the scene, and so on, and uh, and we can get quite advanced there. But again, I'm just mentioning these things to you so you know where they are, and you can search about them yourself. Thank you for watching the whole series, and I think that's all I wanted to cover. So I hope to see you in the next video. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more Blender, and bye for now.